Ontario is pushing pause on the next step of its reopening plan. So what does that mean? Capacity limits were supposed to lift next week on places like nightclubs, strip club, strip uh, clubs and, and, and bathhouses. But Ontario is seeing an increase in COVID-19 cases. The province logged 454 new COVID-19 infections today. And just yesterday, the scientific director of Ontario's COVID-19 science advisory table, Dr. Peter Yoon, called on the province to clamp down on some of its capacity limits. He joins us now. Uh, Dr. Uni, uh, thanks for being there and thanks for the work you're doing. Um, you were just saying that yesterday. I remember hearing you as, you know, Ontario was preparing to reopen. Um, what happened? Well, um, I think it's the right step. I'm not completely sure what happens, but obviously, you know, Dr. Moore and I are also in ongoing communication. We have quite a lot of exchanges during a work week and over the weekend as well. And I think it's absolutely the right step. If you're already accelerating, you don't need to step on the gas pedal. So let's wait a bit longer with uh, just lifting this, uh, these uh, capacity limits and see how this all evolves right now and how the local measures that are needed in places like Sudbury actually are playing out. Do you think we need more measures now? Because yesterday you were saying if it stayed this way, uh, the number of cases would go up a lot more. So is there any action needed now? Uh, fewer people in public places. What do you think is needed? So first of all, what is needed is that we all become aware of the problem and that has happened here with, which is great. And we don't accelerate more with opening. That's great too. And remember, you know, what we did in the past. In the past, we basically did a step and then we wait three weeks and then we did a step again. And that's basically the rhythm that we again are entering, which is good news. Now we need to just figure out what's happening in various places. Remember, for, for instance, uh, Toronto and P still look actually really good. We only have a little bit of case growth, so we can afford what's happening. Other places can't, and then we need to see in these places what's actually going on. Do we know, you know, is there an outbreak that explains case growth? Is it more, is it more subtle and you see cases everywhere, then you need to react a bit differently. So we have enough time as long as we take it seriously and we deal with the problem locally. So we, you're, you're saying that we don't know exactly where these cases are, but do we know what is causing this? Is it um, the unvaccinated? Is it vaccinated people? Do we know uh, that, are, that, are, that are getting sick or infected? Uh, is it that the six-month period between the last shot and the booster, mm -hmm. so now people need boosters? I, I think it, it may be too, too soon to ask you this question, but do we know what's fueling the rise? Yeah, we need to be aware of that. You know, a powerful driver is, of course, the weather with the temperature that went down mid-October. This plays a role. Then we had the capacity limits that were lifted. Perhaps Halloween still played a little bit of a role. So it's a combination of factors. People also start to, you know, let their behavior slip a little bit. Therefore, you know, me again, you know, the boss killed just saying, hello, remember, we're not out of trouble yet. So please wear your mask. Please use vaccine certificates um, stringently. And uh, please get vaccinated if you haven't done so. When you look at the case numbers, it's very clear. You know, the, the, uh, the case growth now is just going up again in the unvaccinated. And uh, that's what's driving the story here. Um, we also see a little bit of growth in the vaccinated. They can also do a lot more. You know, look at the restaurants. Uh, it can be very busy now, but it's a lot less. So again, it's the unvaccinated. But lucky us right now, we don't see anything yet with ICU and hospital beds, you know, going up. So we have a little bit of more time to look at that and just to fine tune our response. Well, that's interesting because I remember at the beginning of the pandemic, we were talking about herd immunity. Uh, where was herd immunity? Was it 65, 75? Now in Ontario, for instance, we're over 85 percent of, 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 you know, obviously <coughs> eligible people vaccinated. So, um, you know, it, it sounds a little bit discouraging and we're going into a winter that, you know, puts us all more indoors than outdoors. So what are you advising people to do? 
So first of all, don't be discouraged. Huh? Again, what we saw during the last 20 months was evolution in action. Huh? This virus developed tremendously, and it's much, much more transmissible now that, uh, than at the beginning. So with the situation we're in, what people need to understand is there's no way out. You need to get immune against this thing. Either you get vaccinated or you get infected. It's as simple as that. And, uh, you know, something that is akin of herd immunity will only basically start start to uh, you know be within reach when nearly everybody has reached immunity not before that and uh, what we now need to do is you know we need to deal with the inequities we're still having we still have a lot of communities who have experienced oppression systemic racism or other discrimination in the past who are, have you know just the distrust against the system and we need to get vaccines and information there and get better that's one of the things we can do then we can uh, start relatively soon vaccinate our five to 11 year olds and then it's another part but that doesn't play a big role yet those who can get third doses shall go and get them. You know, it's roughly six months after you got the second dose. Makes a lot of sense. Right now, we're not in a situation where this is a big deal yet, but more and more people get eligible. Well, thank you for all that, Dr. Peter Uni is the Scientific Director of Ontario Science Table. Thanks for joining us. And again, thanks for your work, doctor. Oh, thanks for having me again.